I'm going to start out by taking you through this first part of the game step by step. You begin with Squall, an antisocial garden military trainee who is yet to meet the love of his life. First off, if this storyline is truly to reach epic levels, then I hope one of the lovers dies. From Shakespeare to the English patient to Titanic, death has proven to be the most effective instrument of high romantic drama. As you can see, the full motion video is impressive, but sometimes the characters feel dead inside. They're too mechanical. Renoa's eyes aren't lively enough, and Squall's face shows no character. He's over-idealized, and the emptiness he feels inside isn't quite captured in his eyes and facial expressions. Perhaps that will change. If you think Squall looks young, check out Zell, the ultimate geekazoid. Look how he smiles right into the camera. Can you get any cheesier than that? Oh well, when you're in class, go into the tutorial in the study panel on your desk. Here you can download your first two guardian forces, or GFs. A guardian force is a powerful mythical creature, or spirit, which casts and defends against certain types of magic. Shiva's elemental magic is ice, so she's effective against fire enemies. Once you download the GFs, leave the classroom. When you run into Selfie, tell her you don't have the time to give her a tour, and then head in the direction from which she came. Notice the guy on the right. He'll give you seven magic cards for later use. Take the cards and go down the elevator. On the next floor, keep walking out toward the screen until you find Quistus, your teacher. Talk to her and then leave the irritating music of Balam Garden. Welcome to the Overworld, home of dated PlayStation graphics. If you look at the ocean and face left, you'll spot a cave behind a small forest area. Go there to fight Ifrit, the fire boss. If you beat him, you can equip him as a GF. You will quickly learn the only way to cast non-GF magic spells is to draw the spells from your enemies while in battle. Personally, I like this system a lot. It gives weaker characters something productive to do while you wait for the impending doom of your character's GF. Sometimes only one GF will be effective on a larger enemy. In Final Fantasy VIII, once you draw a magic spell, you can either store it or cast it. Therefore, enemies with cure spells can actually help you heal yourself. The junction system is confusing at first, but you should get the hang of it in about 30 minutes. The menu system could be much more organized, especially the submenus which are opened by pressing X while on another screen. If you don't read the mandatory in-game tutorials, you'll never know they exist. For every con, there is a pro, however. One con is that the status screen does not show which GFs are equipped. One pro is that item and magic inventory lists are now composed of pages. No more endlessly scrolling item lists. For extended critical analysis of this game, visit flightsoffantasy.com, where we discuss the pros and cons of the junction system, the pacing problems of the battle system left over from Final Fantasy VII, and some minor story quirks. Final Fantasy VIII is a must-buy. It's not perfect, and as of yet, the story is more plot-driven than character-driven, but this game is perhaps the most engaging RPG of all time. The easy difficulty level allows you to freely enjoy the momentum of the story above all else. While traditional RPG elements like armor and money are less apparent in this title, it's a nice change of pace without them. That doesn't mean we don't want to see them again.
Look for continued coverage of this game soon. Oh, by the way, if Square doesn't add voiceovers to Final Fantasy IX, I'm committing suicide. I hate text.